Well, it's, oh it's kind of like workers, uh, what do they call that? Harassment? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Anthony regularly sexually harassed. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, uh, Don, we'll start with you and just, oh, just, just give me, uh, you know, the narrative history in, in two or three minutes or less uh, of how this fabulous shop came into, into being. It seemed to take on a life of its own. What did? Let, let me say that. This project, String Tankers. But it started at a Silver Circle gallery opening where Anthony and George were presenting their works for a month. But there was an opening on a Friday night. And we went and we noticed, I knew Anthony's work, but, but I didn't know that George made guitars and ukuleles. So I went over and played them and thought, my God, they're, they're, they're wonderful. Um, they need a little bit of work, but they're, but they're wonderful. They're like, you know, beautiful furniture with strings. So we have to lighten them up a little bit and so on and so forth. But anyway, I talked to the boys and said, what do you think about making cigar box guitars? And we'll sell them online. They both liked the idea. No. Uh, for an hour, for a year, we sold them online successfully, but we had no place to meet. You were talking about needing a place for creative minds to get together. So we decided that we'd open a bricks and mortar shop, and this is where it's taking on a life of its own. Started with a conversation at a gallery opening, and here we are at 130 Main Street. Anthony, is this a good time to insert what you were talking about? The, uh... Oh, yeah. Let's let's get so, that piece now with so, with everyone uh, at the table. Well, as it were, as a segue, you know, when when we started this operation, and from where I come from, I was this you know punk rocker from D.C. So like here I am playing roots Americana music with the, this guy, and we're playing old time music with a bunch of old guys, and I'm going, <laughs> wow, I'm educating myself on what America's like. And here I am, a Filipino-American, you know, like, my parents are immigrants. So this whole process has been an education in the past. But what I'm noticing with society nowadays is, is they're looking for their roots. They're trying to find their roots because they're trying to hang on to it. So what we are doing here is really, in, we love music, and we're finding the roots of that music in, in American traditional music. Um, and we went straight for the box. And we went to, you know, we were producing four-string banjos. People were like, well, what's a four-string banjo? The banjo came from Africa as a four-stringer. You know, we don't sell them now. We haven't yeah. made any because people don't want to, they don't know how to play it. So we're doing five-stringers, you know, because the fifth string was an American thing. So we are looking back at a past in a tradition, and we're bringing that tradition back to educate, to share a story, to spread our love in music. And we're using technology. I mean, I'm the technology guy. So we're using technology in very innovative ways to spread that message about. And use technology in a way that we can save money so our business flourishes. And the goal, honestly, we're having a lot of fun, so let's get paid. Right. You know? yeah. Let's get paid that, for having fun. That would, be a that would be a great goal, you know. Just have fun and keep getting paid for it. So, I mean, it's it seem and it's a numbers game when you're talking about entrepreneurship. You know, we started in July, so we started with a few people who who knew us. Now it's growing, and it's a process of growing. It's like like the stock market. We've got close you know? to a thousand. Yeah, we got. We got a thousand people on our on email. We have five hundred people on Facebook. We it's close just, to the, a thousand now. Yeah, yeah. and and this stuff is just happening day to day. It's a numbers game. So the more people that see us, they know the story. They they love our stuff. They buy our stuff. So the more money we make, the more we can have fun. Yeah, so. there's a really interesting dichotomy going on in this business, in that we're very old world and that you know we're using hand tools to make these and we're reclaiming materials but we're using technology in a really smart way and a very efficient way it's not the, the centerpiece of our business um, but the way that Anthony has been using it has been um, you know very pinpointed and very um, particular 
And the irony is that through all this technology, the word has really been spread by grassroots. It's people who know us, who talk about us on Facebook and tell their friends, you've got to check this site out, you've got to go to this place. And that, that is really interesting to me, and I think we all really enjoy that it's kind of going back to that but, roots. But ultimately, it comes down to the product, this beautiful product oh that George God. has made. Look at this. Yeah. It's, it comes down to the product, the Look craftsmanship. But on top of that, Astounding. on top of that, it is the story. Um, I lived in D.C., didn't know my neighbor, didn't know their story. I come to Putnam, I know everybody's story. And we have a story, and we're sharing that. Now, Nike, they'd love to have a great story <laughs> like ours. You know, with social media connecting to businesses now, they, people want to touch the businesses. They want to know the story. They want to know the people behind it. When people come to our website, they know three people, Don, George, and I. You know, they know strength tankers, they know our instruments, but they know us three. We had been kind of working remotely from each of our respective homes, and we'd just meet and have coffee at Victoria Station. Mm -hmm. and Which go, I love, by the way. Yeah. And then we'd kind of go our separate ways and then meet up again and see where we were and just desperately needed a, you know, more of a central location for everything, from photography and storage. I mean, mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, piling them in my studio and then we'd bring them out and take photographs in the yard and stuff like that. But, um, Terry and Sarah from the stomping ground next door are good friends of ours, and um, this I remember when this place opened up, and then they told us, you know, that place is available, and we we're just like, we got to do that. I mean, we could we couldn't have imagined a better place or better location. It really was uh, a bit of serendipity. It was, we were very fortunate, right place, right time. So. And what is this you're working on right now? Um, a six-string electric guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're trying something a little different right now. Um, usually we kind of celebrate uh, the top of the box. Um, this one has a really nice one. Mm -hmm. um, but this one happens to have a piece of Indian rosewood, solid, um, rather thin bottom. So I flipped this one over in, in hopes that we could get a little, little better tonal quality out of the mm -hmm. box. Um, with our six strings, we usually put a, a coil pickup in them, so they take on the properties of kind of an, a hollow body electric guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, the pickup does most of the work, and then mm -hmm. the box just kind of lets the air move around and you let it escape. But every once in a while, you'll get a box that has enough you know, tone quality to it where it, it, you just amplify the acoustics of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what we're hoping with this. And, and then the wood is just a beautiful piece of wood. It, it really is. Rose, it really which, is. Yeah. Uh, you don't, you don't get uh, very often. What's the origin of that piece? The origin of the box in India. And we get a few of them. Uh, they're really, they tend to be really nice boxes. Um, this is a, quite a nice Indian spice box. And there's just such an incredible amount of carving done on it. It's just amazing that, you know, it's an object of beauty in and of itself, and then uh, just being able to make a you know an acoustic instrument out of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kind of adds to its uh, its desirability or collectability in a way. Um, really nice marquetry box, and again these are this isn't for. Uh, I'm sorry, you're calling it what? Just got some really nice marquetry and inlay in it. Oh, I see. Um, which you know I can't imagine the hours I would need to put mm -hmm. in to mm -hmm. make a box mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. Um, so that'll get turned into a really beautiful instrument as well. Mm -hmm. George, I'm doing this backwards, but when you come back, I just wanted you to, this is called a voice slate, where you tell me your name so I get it right in the credits. Okay. Uh, my name is George Bryn. Um, B-R-I-N. B-R-I-N. Okay. Yeah. And you're a, you're, a, you're a graduate of the RISD School of Industrial Design? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Rhode Island School of Design mm -hmm. and uh, graduated in 95. And uh, I've been making instruments for going on 10 years now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really ramped up. Since we've started our business two years ago, I've made over 50 of these, closer to 60, I believe. But, um, I couldn't believe it. Anthony gave me kind of our master list of all the ones we'd made, kind of put them in some order. 
and uh, I did a count, and there are at least ten instruments that hadn't they got away without being photographed, unfortunately. Mm. So that puts the count at around sixty-two. So. Mm -hmm. um, and who are your who are who's buying these instruments? I mean, collectors obviously, and and professionals. And are there some name people who have been through the store that? Uh, yeah, we've had some really uh, it, much to our surprise. I think um, we've had some big names. I guess the first one was um, um, uh, Ricky Skaggs, the, the famous bluegrass uh, player, has one of our instruments, and that was really exciting. He really liked that. Um, that was a a blues festival that we did, uh, a bluegrass festival that we did uh, a number of years ago that ended up just being a total washout. It rained for three days straight. It was horrible. It was painful to watch because they put so much into this festival and very few people came out. But uh, we did get to meet Ricky Skaggs briefly and hand off the instrument that he uh, signed and he wanted one. So that was really nice. And then uh, the musician Fiona Apple bought one of our instruments online and uh, but I'd say the biggest one, uh, without a question, is Doyle Bremall II, uh, has one of our instruments. Um, I have a mutual friend with uh, of, I'm a, I have a mutual friend with him, and uh, got in touch with him about making a custom instrument um, for his girlfriend, and um, he ended up giving me backstage pass to uh, Eric Clapton, who he was playing guitar for at the time. And I, that was pretty cool for me. <laughs> didn't get to meet Clapton, didn't get to meet Slohan, but uh, uh, I, Doyle is one of the finest guitar players out there. He is extraordinary and a very unique guitar player. Plays his guitar strong right-handed, but flipped upside down and plays it left-handed. Like, um, like so, Hendrix, except, Well, right? Hendrix restrung his. He did a mirror image, so... Okay. But he, he yeah, he plays that style. Mm -hmm. And so he's got his own fingering that he, you know, mm -hmm. kind of invented. Mm -hmm. And he wow. play, you know, he plays a lot on the up. Uh, mm -hmm. Strong, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. really unique guitar player. Mm -hmm. uh, so he came in the shop when they were in town, and uh, sat down and played the guitar and left with it. And we've got some really nice footage of that. That was uh, that was a real coup. Um, and hopefully he'll be, you know, when he's back in town, I, I imagine he'll probably stop in again. He uh, he really liked this place. He he left to go get some lunch when he was here, and then he came back alone. <laughs> without his kids and his girlfriends that he, he wanted to play. Um, and you play, I imagine. I do, I play a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, I, uh, I make them, I let the players really, you know, really play them. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the important things was to make a playable instrument. I mean, it's really easy for these instruments to be construed as gimmick gimmicks or, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know... Uh, just for collectors, but I, that's not at all what we wanted. We just wanted a unique, uh, you know, a unique instrument made from reclaimed and refound, uh, rediscovered, in, you know, uh, materials in these beautiful boxes. So they are um, kind of an amalgamation of uh, of antiquity and history, and uh, and then playability. Um, you know, the, the way I make the necks, I, I put adjustable truss rods in them so you can keep your fretboard nice and flat. Um, we customize the action depending on how someone likes to play. A lot of a lot of people who buy these instruments like playing slide guitar tends to be kind of the, the theme for them. But there are a lot of people who are real good finger pick, um, you know, pickers and they like a nice low action. So, uh, and that's that's me. I like a nice light, light low action. So I tend to try to, to string them up that way. Um, and I think people get, are surprised when they sit down and they plug them in. They're like, wow, this is really an instrument. This isn't just a, you know, isn't a gimmick. Something to hang over the fireplace. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's awesome. That's an awesome story, man. Yeah. It's, I mean, the whole thing's awesome. It's been a lot of fun. I mean, more than anything, we've just had a blast doing it. And, you know, every one of them is different. Um, I make all the headstocks on each of the instruments I make different. Uh, I've, I've made maybe the same one a couple of times, one that I like, but um, this is going to be a banjo. And mm -hmm. uh, the tin, which is downstairs, has the Statue of Liberty on it. <laughs> so I kind of took that motif and mm -hmm. did a little decorative mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. at the top. Mm -hmm. um, so I try to you know, make, give the, the headstock some relationship to the body. Uh, this one happens to have a little floral carving up at the top, mm -hmm. which... And are these woods recycled, or is that not part of the stock 
yeah, the neck. All, all of our necks are reclaimed flooring uh, cutoffs. Oh, that's cool. So um, I, I've used both reclaimed from you know old historic homes, but the reality is the wood in old homes tends to be chestnut mm -hmm. or oak, mm -hmm. and they you know they don't have very nice properties as for making uh, guitar instruments. I have used them before, and you know on some of the the, the dulcitars and even the banjos, they're not so bad, but. Uh, we also have another supplier and all of their cutoffs, which are going back into the furnace. I mean, they're, they're useless to them. Um, I can go and get for a, a song. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and you get some, some really unusual, really nice wood. And the quality of the wood is outstanding there. It's mm -hmm. all really well dried. And so you know you're not getting any funky piece of wood that's going to twist on you. And, mm -hmm. um, and that's been really nice. We, you know, we get... This, this piece of wood um, on top here is a wood called Movinge. Uh, it's incredibly rare and very expensive uh, to purchase. I Never in a million years would I buy a piece of Movinge. And this is the last of it. They had a giant order. It was the, uh, one of the CEOs of Apple, um, his apartment in New York. He did the entire you know 12,000 square feet or something of nothing but Movinge. And when you oil the stuff, it looks like liquid gold. It's, mm -hmm. It's overwhelming. <laughs> I can't imagine an entire floor out of it. But it's really dense. It's really beautiful. So it makes great fretboards. And that's what I've been using it for. And we're almost out of it. Um, Did you get these tailings from that job, the Apple? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because that, that was the only order. He, they had to order so much of it to mill down for these custom floors. They had a lot of you know scraps left over mm -hmm. from it. And I went and got most of the scraps from it. And the scraps are, you know, are sized to where I can get, you know, fretboards. That's about all I can get out of them. Right. So it's, it's right. perfect. Yeah, great. Um, but we get all kinds of, we have cherry, uh, maple, a lot of mahogany. Mahogany is, you know, highly desired for, for shaping necks. And, uh, and some walnut. I like using walnut a bunch. Um, and every once in a while we'll get something unusual like Australian cypress, um, which is a gorgeous wood that you really don't see around here. And um, try to just mix and, mix and match them with the, the different types of woods that are on the bodies. Um, and a lot of times the, the cigar boxes that we get nowadays are just, they're junk. You know, they're, they're made out of pressed particle board or even worse, MDF with paper on top. So there's, they have zero resonant qualities to them. It's just the graphic. So I try not to use those. Uh, and if I do use them, it, again, it's, it's all about the electrical pickup that's in it that really, you know is doing everything. Um, but on occasion you get really beautiful solid wood um, cedar boxes which are beautiful and I try not to touch them much. I just put a little piezo pickup in them and they, they make enough sound you know, and they have some uh, nice properties to them. Um, unfortunately it's gone. We had a beautiful um, a ukulele that I made from a Connecticut uh, cigar manufacturer and it was from the 30s and it was embossed and had beautiful graphics and it was just virtually untouched. It, it's amazing that it was preserved for so long. And when I find those, that's, you know, those are really the most special ones, uh, for sure. I've even thought about, um, you know, that wonderful show. I mean, I'm, I love American Pickers and American Restoration. I don't watch a lot of TV, but I watch them online. And mm -hmm. I love those kinds of shows, you know, where mm -hmm. they're taking old Americana and revitalizing mm -hmm. at least mm -hmm. getting it out mm -hmm. and restoring it and showing people and I thought about I mean you know you find someone who's on the road like that that's their job is searching for antiquity mm -hmm. to even put something out there like we'll buy any old cigar boxes you can find you know because they're getting really hard to find you you can find little tiny ones you know these these are more often what you're gonna find I and mean, this is a really beautiful old box but obviously can't become a, an instrument so it's hard to find them where they're they're sized accordingly, and uh, uh, just makes them you know a lot more rare. What should we play? Just what you do. Just what you do. Yeah. Oh, I don't have any words. That was. Oh God! Play, play song do one of your uh, what key? Texas friend songs. Yeah. Okay. What key? Um. Let's see. Um, what does it start off in? Uh, G. Ready? Okay, ready? And George, what is this song? Uh, Shivering. 